Hello YouTube. Hello Wayan. Today is the six steps underwater photography. Part three, macro photography. Macro photography is taking pictures of subjects, animals or details that will appear at a ratio of one to one or higher on the picture. During this episode, we'll talk about main things about macro photography. Then we'll talk about the different type of equipments you can use then the different subjects and their behavior, and finally the composition. You can't wait on other people to be what you've been called to be. You can't wait on their affirmation. You can't wait on their approval. You can't wait on their support. Sometimes you've just got to run and look behind you and say, everybody who wants to run, run, but I can't stop running because you're not running with me. Listen, listen to me, hear me. You can't stop chasing your dream just because somebody in your life won't chase it with you. You can't stop believing in yourself just because somebody in your life won't believe in you. You can't stop chasing the dreams of your life just because when you know when you do it, you're going to have to do it all by yourself. The bigger the magnification, the smaller the depth of field is going to be, and the easier it's going to be to lose your subject or move on your composition. Taking macro photography is trying to take the colors of the subject to pop up and have a nice contrast with the background. When taking macro photography, you're going to want to choose the point of focus. Most of the time it will be the eye. Focus on this and then try to get your composition to be nice with some blurriness of the subject and even a nice bokeh for the background. Make sure that you don't damage the environment to take a few pictures. There is always a way, either by having a good neutral buoyancy or by finding a place where there is only sand or rocks to make it easy and make sure as well that you have a nice position and that you don't break anything. First, we'll talk about the different kind of equipments and different setups you can have. Underwater, you're mainly going to use point and shoot or DSLR cameras. It can be also mirrorless. We won't use action camera too much. It is possible to do decent pictures with action cam, but it will be more difficult because you cannot use a strobe and you're limited in your composition. Using point and shoot, you will need to use a focus light that will help your camera to do a nice focus and also a strobe that will bring all of the colors back. It's also better to have two strobes, but one would do the job. We'll talk about the lighting in a later section. When using your point and shoot, you're going to want to put it on macro mode. This will allow you to make very nice and sharp pictures from small subjects, fish, nudie branch, corals or anything. You can zoom actually all the way to the optical zoom. And then this will allow you to take pictures of small animals but not to have to be so close to them that they're scared and go away. Using DSLR or mirrorless camera, you're going to need to choose the lens you want to have. It's going to be either a 60 mm macro or it can be from 90 to 105 depending on the brand. The lens you will take will depend on what kind of subject you want to take pictures from. If the subject is of a medium size, let's say a maximum 20 centimeters, a 60 millimeter macro is super nice. It can also take pictures of smaller animals because you can get closer and the minimum distance is very small. Taking a lens from 90 to 105 will allow you to take pictures of animals that are a little bit shy. If you cannot get too close to the animal, if they're scared easily, then you will put the 105 and keep a distance that will be nice to take your compositions. You can use either full frame or crop sensor. The advantage of the full frame is that you can use the full, in my case, 42 megapixel of my sensor. But if I want, I can put my camera on APS-C mode and naturally crop the picture to 20 megapixel or something like this and still have a good composition. Don't forget, the bigger the magnification, the more difficult it will be to take pictures. Number one, the depth of field will become smaller. Number two, every time you're going to move the camera, the composition will change a lot. The great things about taking pictures with mirrorless and DSLR cameras is that the autofocus is super fast. Like for the point and shoot, we will need 
a focus light that will help our focus to be very sharp and fast and also a strobe or two to bring all of the colors from the animals or the polyps or nudie branch or whatever you want to take. By choosing a single point of focus and placing it where I want in my frame, I can have a nice composition and keep the eye of the animal super sharp. To make the picture as sharp as possible, you're going to have to find the good depth of field and take the picture at the exact distance where you can make a very nice focus. Now the subject. A few things can make our subject be different and us interact differently underwater. Number one, the size. Size will make you choose, in the case of DSLR or mirrorless, the lens you want to take. So if the animal is of, let's say, medium size, 10, 20 centimeters, you will need to take a 60 millimeter macro. You will try to get in a nice steady place and then get the animal to come to you and have a nice picture. It's very rare that you need to chase your animal. Most of the time you want him to be interested in you, come around and then when he's looking in the good direction, take your shot. For animals less than 10 centimeters, you're gonna take the 90 to 105 lens and it will allow you to stay a little bit further from the animal. Normally the working distance of one of those cameras will be around 30 centimeters. For 60 millimeter lens, the working distance on average is about 20 centimeters. So you can get very close to your subject, but the magnification is not so high. When using point and shoot, you're not affected with the size of the animal so much. If the animal is big enough, you don't need to zoom, you can just stay close enough. If it's very shy, you can zoom a little bit in. And if it's very small, you can probably zoom to the maximum and try to find the right distance where you can still make the focus. For beginners, I recommend you try to take pictures from non-moving animals first. Non-moving animals and subject in general. Nice polyp, the rhinopores of a nudie branch, everything that moves very slowly or doesn't move at all. The good thing about it is that you will have time to make your composition, decide where you want to put the lights, where you want to stand, everything. If it's a moving subject, it will be a little bit more difficult. You can also change all of the settings, aperture, speed, light, TTL, not TTL. All of those things will allow you to make different pictures and eventually decide the one you like the most. Moving subjects or animal will be a little bit more challenging. You will need to have a very nice buoyancy and be able to make the fish forget that you're around him. You will need to use a faster speed. Most of the time I use 1 over 125 to make sure that I don't get too much blur movement. And then what I prefer to do is stand in one place and then wait for the animals to come to me. If you're taking pictures of clownfish or animals that always stay in the same place, even if they keep moving all the time, you can choose your composition and what picture you want to take and just wait for the animal to come and make the composition nice. For the position, you can either choose a neutral buoyancy and use your lungs to go up and down a little bit, or you can use the bottom. Using the bottom, you will want to have a slightly negative buoyancy. Get your elbows in the sand and hold your camera with two hands and try to get your body as steady as possible. Of course, when doing this, you want to find a place where there is no corals or anything to damage and like this you just stand on the bottom and you know are good for the environment. Try not to follow the fish. Most of the time the only thing you're going to achieve is to take pictures of tails of fish. Some of them are very nice but most of the time you want the animal to be interested in what you're doing or try to find where he likes to stay and where he likes to look and then by standing in the good position, you will be able to get the good shot. Finally, the composition. Lead room is very important technique for wildlife photography. If you take a small subject and the background is mainly blurry, you will want the subject to have enough space where he's looking. So, for example, if I'm looking to the right, I will need to have a space big enough on my right. The rule of third is to cut your screen in nine rectangles 
by making two horizontal lines and two vertical lines, you end up having nine rectangles. And then you will use the intersection of the rectangles as interest points. Most of the time you will want to have your main subject in the top left corner and the rest of your composition depending on what you like to do. As you can see, if you take your subject right in the middle, the picture is quite flat and not so interesting. But if you have your subject in one of the corners, then the picture is much more interesting. It leads you somewhere. You want to look at other parts of the picture and it will bring you somewhere. Composition weight is mainly when you have a subject standing on something, for example, a nudie branch on a leaf or something. You will try to have a balance between your animal and where he's standing on. One final thing that is important for your composition is, of course, the background. In our case, we have two main options. Number one, the, the background is nice. It's a nice color. It goes well with the subject and you can use it. It will be, be very nice. Number two, the background is too disturbing or not really nice. And then you will want to take the picture from under to above. And like this, you will find a water background. By having this water background, you will choose depending on the speed and aperture. We'll talk about it in a later section. If you want to have a blue or a black background. If you like the video, don't hesitate to put a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and leave a comment below. Thank you.